Andrew here, Sterilizer Autoclave Solutions, 704-966-1650, option three for free tech support, or you can visit us at statumusa.com. Okay, now we are going to, an, to do an annual preventative maintenance kit replacement for a Tutenauer EZ9. Um, again, uh, this, the, the sizes of the chamber may be different, which would dictate a different uh, door gasket, but annual preventative maintenance is always going to be a door gasket. Um, annual preventative maintenance for the EZ models is going to be a door gasket, an air jet, a safety valve, and a HEPA filter. The HEPA filter should actually be replaced every six months. We will show you how to do that in this video. So, all right, so what you will need is a 10 millimeter wrench, a 5 8 wrench. You might even also need a three quarter wrench, depending on how big your original safety valve is, and then an adjustable wrench. So right now, also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, obviously, the unit is unplugged, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's no water inside of the unit. To drain the water in the unit, you're just gonna take, the, this is a screw, it unscrews, and water flows out there. Uh, you put a bucket underneath it, put a tube on it, drain all the water out. That way, if you drop any tools or anything inside the reservoir, it's not dropping it in the, the gook um, or whatever's in there. But anyways, this is also a good opportunity when you're doing the maintenance to clean the reservoir because then you'll have some of the parts out of there. Also, give a visual inspection to you know some of these uh, problem areas back in the back here this is where all the power comes in that's where all the safety uh, thermostats are there's a lot of voltage back here you're going to look for burnt or corroded wiring you're also going to look up here by the power switch for burnt or corroded wiring blackened swollen connectors so on and so forth you're going to look for any leaks underneath the cover if the reservoir is leaking if the water pumps leaking if any of these valves are leaking you're going to get a flashlight in here and you're going to look um, if the valves up here are leaking, you're going to look at this fitting. I would look at this fitting. This is a very common leak point. Um, also, you're going to take this off. And when you're doing the maintenance, this is actually part of your weekly maintenance also, is you're going to take this filter out, make sure this is clean. Uh, this is actually monthly maintenance. Refer to a different video for that. But uh, let's, while you're there, let's just make sure everything's good to go. This is your inline water filter, just in case you were wondering. Uh, that will have to be cleaned from time to time. Um, okay, so let's get back to the point of the video. It's the annual preventative maintenance. So we're going to take our 5 8 wrench and our adjustable wrench. And um, so to be nice and safe and not to cause any un uh, extra problems, you're going to take your adjustable wrench. You're going to put it on this block here. Then you're going to take your 5 8 wrench or 3 quarters wrench and you're going to put it on the safety valve itself. And then you know, this is gonna be on there tight, so you're gonna to wanna, to, you know, hold, make sure that this brass piece stays in position. So hold this nice and tight, and then turn this. If you turn, if you turn, if this thing moves, you see it moves back here. If this one's moving at the fitting, you know, that's just gonna cause leaks. So we don't, we don't wanna do that. You wanna leave that nice and tight and sturdy in its positioning. Um, and so, and then we can loosen this one. And you can get it to a point where it's hand tight or, you know, you can just take it off by hand and unscrew it. Then we'll do the air jet. Uh, keep in mind, you're going to want to do this uh, while the unit is cold um, because all these components will be hot. So next, uh, we're going to take off the air jet, which is right here. Um, this is an easy 10. An easy 10, an easy 10 has a black air jet. Boom. Black air jet for all the 110 uh, 115 volt models for all the 220 volt models it's going to be a red air jet so when you're ordering your preventative maintenance kit just uh you know be specific as to 220 basically the model of your unit is what our team will ask you for what you should be providing our team so we got a 10 millimeter wrench um, this is a little bit of a process but you unscrew a little bit then you flip the wrench and you unscrew a little bit more you gotta flip the wrench around every time to kind of get it to move faster. The reservoirs, you can't, you can't put a socket on this because the way the air jet is set up. I guess if you're replacing it, you could cut the air jet uh, and then put a socket on it, but let's not do that. Okay, what's going on here? This is stupid. Okay, here we're taking the air jet off. Like I said, this, the reason why it's a good time to clean it is because you've got this, the safety valve out 
and you can actually get inside there. You can use OptiClave. We, we sell that um, basically the night before you'd squirt an ounce of OptiClave in a full reservoir and then that would break down all the stuff on the side walls and, and then you can use a rag, you can use a toilet brush, you can just scrub the outer walls, then you take your um, take a gallon jug of water, fill it up and then drain it out the front, maybe do that once or twice, call us, we'll kind of walk you through that again. Um, or refer to a different video. Okay, so now we're ready to put the air jet and the safety valve in. Um, I'm gonna do it. So we took off the safety valve first, then the air jet. Now we're gonna put the air jet on first, and then put the safety valve on, just because then I can get my hand in there all the way. It's kind of annoying if you got tiny hands. Uh, you can get right in there, but okay. We don't want to cross thread these things. You want to get them hand tight. So I got mine in there, nice and hand tight, screwed in. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's more difficult. Sometimes you'll drop this into the water. Um, that's why I recommend draining all the water out. Possibly even wearing gloves when you do it. It's up to you. If your sterilizer is working properly, it should be all right. But it, depending on your maintenance, if you don't clean this thing often, it could be pretty nasty. So I'm just tightening this. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. I did not put Teflon tape on it. You can. Um, it's it basically the way when you go to screw it on there, you get your hand in there, the Teflon tape might come loose. And, and by the time you get this thing all the way screwed in, the Teflon tape might not be there anyway. And you'll have dangling strands that fall into the reservoir. And, and you know, so it's just kind of, as long as you tighten it down all the way. This thing, it's supposed to leak. That's what this does. It's a, it's a metering air jet. So it, it spits out steam as the, the unit's building pressure so that, you know, it's, it protects from overheating or overpressurizing. Okay, so we almost got that tight. Okay, you don't want it to go too, too much. Okay, that's about it. That's all I did. Okay, so now we're going to do the safety valve. I do like to put Teflon tape on this one. I'm gonna redo it. I like to go counterclockwise. I like to use the yellow. It's more durable. Get it tight, smooth it off like that. And then this start hand tight. Got it hand tight, and then we're gonna do the same thing as when we took it off. We're gonna tighten this thing, this wrench down onto that, that uh, little block there, and then we're gonna just tighten. And if we don't have to get crazy with this. You know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get it nice and snug. You know, really the, the reason why we don't wanna over tighten is because when we gotta take it off again uh, next year, we don't wanna have to, we don't wanna break anything. You know, some people just put this thing on way too tight, so. Let's see, I got it pretty good there. Okay, good, awesome. All right, now we've already done the air jet and the safety valve. Um, this is where, so just so you know, this is the HEPA filter. This'll come through the cabinet and screw in here. If you saw our other video, then you see how to take the cover off, then it kind of twists in here and sits right here. This should be replaced every six months. I always take it off from the back. I always like to put the date on it. That way you know. Um, this is always fun to take off. Some Sometimes you break it, um, honestly. Hopefully I'll get lucky here. Okay, good. That that didn't break, so we're, we're happy. But basically you just take that off, discard it, put your new one on, same slot. The flow of air, is it's being sucked in here into the air pump and blows. So we're gonna point the arrow. The flow is going into the machine. Push it in, clip it in. So this one, this is now installed. When we go to plug it in, you put it on here, you'll work it way up. We'll get it up a little farther. But don't do that yet. We'll do that when we put the cover on. So, um, all right, so now we're gonna work on the door gasket. Um, right now I'm using, this is an OEM door gasket. This is actually an aftermarket one. All the aftermarkets are green, doesn't matter what size. Um, installation of the gasket is also the same. 
Um, so on the OEM ones, you're looking for the, there's a tapered edge and then there's a more flat edge. The flat edge goes into the door. Basically, you're gonna start on the bottom. Your thumb on there, push it in. The top. You don't want to, this doesn't, you don't want this to be hot because then you won't be able to get your hands on here because you'll be burning yourself. So do this as a, on a cold, do it cold. That way you don't burn anything. Get the top, so you get 12 o'clock, six o'clock, and then it doesn't matter if you go nine o'clock or three o'clock. We're just trying to shrink these gaps. So we got a gap here, gap here. We got that there. And we got bubble, bubble, bubble. We'll go over here. Basically from there, as you get the gap smaller, just start to crank your finger in there. Nice and smooth, push it in. Okay, last but not least, we've got the last corner. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so then you want to go through. You want to visually inspect. You want anything hanging out. Um, you can use a screwdriver to kind of push stuff in, but then you might gouge it. So be careful if you do that. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how you install the gasket. That's how you install the safety valve. Um, I am going to show you right now. I'm not going to fully put the cover on, but I'm going to show you how to install the HEPA filter. Basically, I just take, I, on these ones, I always put the, uh, the cover on first. And I get it sitting up towards the front here. And then, see how it's hanging below the bottom? I got to get inside and wiggle it through here. Then once I do that, I can line everything else up. I can line the back up. And then I can plug my help the filter in here. And then it goes inside. And then there's little slots on the, the cap here. Some have, some don't, depends on what year you bought them. But then you get the slot into that slot where it's supposed to fit, like so. So um, if you have any other questions, that's how it's supposed to fit. Like I said, the cover's not all the way on. Uh, but if you have any other questions, please give us a call. We'd love to walk you through this. Um, again, this was an automatic preventative maintenance, annual preventative maintenance kit that we did replace. The EZ10, the EZ9 are the same, the EZ10K, the EZ9K, these are all falling under the same uh, category. The EA models, if you have an EA model, that means you have a HEPA filter that's going to be the same. So um, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to our channel and please stay tuned for more Tootin' Hour troubleshooting videos.